What's going on everybody? Welcome back to 3D Printing Sunday. On this stream, we'd go through and I try and teach you a little bit about 3D modeling using Fusion 360. Although a lot of the modeling techniques can be generally uh, uh, taken from one program to another because all 3D modeling has uh, usually has some similarities at least. Today, Again, last week we kind of went super basic, like an introduction to the program, some basic drawing skills. Today, we're gonna to kind of continue on that path, still trying to keep things pretty basic. Um, and yeah, sorry, I was looking at comments, making sure everything was was uh, going well. But anyway, uh, again, today we're gonna to try and stay pretty basic. We're gonna go through, and today our plan is to draw like a receiver box more generally a, just a two piece box. We'll put some, you know, screw holes in it, but it's going to help kind of figure out making parts that are multiple pieces in one drawing file. There's a little bit to that, but I think we'll be able to get through that and explain it fairly well. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll see who's checking in as we go. Just getting things kicked off. So I'm going to flip to fusion here and Let's adjust that slightly. This is what you'll see when you open Fusion for the you know first time. This is your your intro screen. Last week we went through and I kind of told you a little bit about what the the buttons and things like that do across the top. So if you need a little bit more of an intro, you can go back to week eighteen. That's actually a two part two videos because we had a an issue about twenty five minutes in and we had to restart. So. Check that video out if you need a little bit more info on what we've got going on. But today, let's do a let's do a box with a lid, a receiver box. You know that technically you could three D print this one. In the end, we're probably not going to end up with much of a model that's like the great scale accessory that you guys are going to want to have the STL of to print yourself. This is more about the actual modeling side itself. But we are going to be trying to pay attention to things that are important for 3D printing. And I'll try and go across or go over those as we run across them. Anyway, this is, like I said, the blank screen. I talked a little bit last week about, you know, teaching you that you're always drawing on some sort of plane or like a, you know, you kind of picture it as a sheet of paper. You draw your first 2D shape and then you try and manipulate that to turn it into a 3D shape. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to go up to the top left side and we're going to create a new sketch. And then we're going to select which plane we want to start on. There's three planes to start with normally before you do anything else. That's the top, front, and right planes. So we're going to start with the top. So we selected that. Now you can click up on the top and it'll automatically rotate. I don't know. Normally it rotates for you, but it didn't this time for some reason. From this point, we're just going to get started by trying to draw the actual box itself. We're going to select the rectangle tool at the top. Now you can... There's a number of different ways you can, you can go click the box there or you can go rectangle here and you can do a couple of other options. Two point rectangle is the standard, but the center rectangle is always nice as well because you can click on the origin, which is that dot at the center of your, your sketch. And then you can just kind of draw from there. And that keeps everything nice and centered. I, a lot of times do a two point rectangle and then kind of fill the geometry in myself, but you can go drop down on create, go to rectangle, center rectangle if you like. No matter what you're doing, you can kind of hit escape on your keyboard and just clear any of the commands you're in. So we have this rectangle and it's all blue because it's not defined. It doesn't know what size it needs to be at all. That's why you can drag this around and end up with, you know, whatever, whatever shape. Hey, thanks Juan Rico for the donation. Thanks for the tips. Um, probably been said before, but thoughts on the Sendero kit versus the Gen 8 kit for a rock oriented crawler. Um, I would suggest going with a Sendero just for dur you know, durability. I like the performance of it better and uh, I just like the build of it better. But we've got this box here. So we're going to hit the D key on our keyboard to start a dimension. Then we're going to select this bottom line and let's just make this 50 millimeters. It's about two inches. And then for the width or height, we're since we already hit D, it's still in the dimension key or in the dimension screen. We'll drop that there and we'll just do 40 millimeters. And that's going to be our outside dimensions of this box. Now I'm drawing a box. There's a couple of ways. First, we're just going to hit finish sketch. The first thing we could do is hit this extrude button at the top, which takes our 
profile, which is what this is called. And then it allows us to just extrude. And that's like when you just take something and drag it, you know, drag it out, or you can extrude a cut, which is a little bit different than how some programs call it. But basically it's just dragging something to try and, you know, either make a shape or cut a shape. That's how solid work, or solid works. This is fusion. That's how fusion does it. So let's make this 30 millimeters tall. You can kind of just drag it like that until you like this, the size, or you can use the little prompt that pops in. You can just type 30. And now we have a box that's 50 by 40 by 30, but it's solid. There is no, it's right now it's a cube, not a box. So we need to make it a box. We can either use the shell command up here, which is a cool and nice function. You can just say, select this top face and you could just say, I want the wall thickness to be four millimeters. So type a four and now you have a box that has a four millimeter wall all the way around it. That works pretty well. Um, shell commands like one of those ones that doesn't always work fantastic on all shapes. It can kind of be kind of funky. So the second way to do it is you click create a sketch and then you select whatever plane you want to try and draw the shape you plan to cut. So we're going to cut from the top down. And then at this point, again, we can go into the rectangle, center rank rectangle, click on the origin and drag out. And now say for some reason you wanted the top portion to not have four millimeter walls, you wanted it to have three millimeter walls there. But on the outsides, you wanted it to have four millimeter walls. Now you couldn't do that with shell, but if you're doing an extrude like this, then you you can. So not necessarily a common thing to do, but one, one little thing you could, you could see. So now we have that profile. We're going to hit the extrude button again, and then we're going to select the inner portion that we want to cut down. So this, you know, wants to see if you want to drag it up to create a more shape or as you go downwards, it'll turn red. And that kind of shows you that it's wanting to cut the object. So we know that we made this thing 30 millimeters tall, but we can also do some things over here on the right side where we can do, uh, let's the direction extent. Can we do an offset on this? I can't remember. Uh, I don't I actually don't know if this one does the offset as well. I'm used to using offset in solid work. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go down to negative 27 millimeters. There's a, so now we have a three millimeter wall thickness on the bottom. We have three millimeter on the sides and four millimeter on the ends. Not important why it was just something we kind of did. Um, this, uh, just got on making receiver, a uh, universal receiving box to make custom builds. Nice. I'm going to teach you how to draw a universal receiver box and then you should be, or draw a receiver box in some, you know, fashion. And then from there, you'll be able to make a very custom one specific to whatever you want to build. So let's teach a man to fish. Uh, Harley, do we need to refer to you as Mr. Thede or Mr. T on this stream? <laughs> very funny. Uh, Harley is a lot easier to say than my last name. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you go that route. So here we have a box. This is about as simple of a CAD model as there is. Now you can see me kind of moving and manipulating this model around. What I'm doing there is I'm using the center click on my mouse wheel, and then I'm holding the shift key on my keyboard. That's how it allows you to manipulate like that. If you don't hold shift, it just moves it around kind of in a single plane. Anyway, in case you didn't know exactly how I was manipulating things like that. I highly suggest a mouse and keyboard over just using like a trackpad on a laptop. It'll make you much, much quicker if you can, if you can do that. Otherwise you can reach up and grab this cube in the top corner and kind of drag it around, or you can click on faces or areas on this cube to get different views. But a mouse and mouse and keyboard is my suggestion. So from here, we need to draw a top. Say we were going to work with this as our model. Say it was the size we wanted, things like that. For me, you know, we'll go through and add fillets and things like that later, just because that's what I would 
require. But let's add the top first. And this is what I wanna go into because a lot of times when you wanted to design a part, you need multiple parts. And it's easiest to do that in one CAD model versus multiples and like always trying to go back and forth to relate dimensions. So that's where we're gonna do this. And that's where I'm gonna start showing you the difference of creating new bodies inside of a model. On the left side here of the screen, you can see that there's this, this tree. We've got the origin, which talks us you know, about that little point we very first started on. It's where the convergence of the front, right, and top plane meet. That's the, the single, the origin point. And then it shows from there some of those axes and planes. From there, the next one down is bodies. Now bodies is what we're gonna kind of be talking about more today. This right now is a body. That box is one piece, so it is a body. You can think of any single piece you can pick up basically as a body. Now I have a screw and a servo horn. If I screwed those into each other, while those are now connected, technically this is still like two bodies. You've got one body is the screw, one body is the servo horn. So that's, that's what we're looking at, you know, things like that. Let, so now, getting into what, actually doing what we were just talking about. Let's start by drawing the lid. We're gonna create a new sketch. So we're gonna go to the top left, create sketch. And then we're gonna work off of this top surface of the box that we've created. So we're gonna highlight that surface and select it. Now we're working on that plane. One thing that helps, this tree pops up over here on the right side, the very bottom option of the radio box is 3D sketch. If you turn that off by deselecting that box, you won't end up clicking on a line out in space somewhere. And sometimes that can help uh, just simplify things for you. It's not something you need to know right now for most basic drawing. Deselect that and it will help keep things a little bit easier in Fusion. So now let's go select rectangle. We're going to select that center rectangle again, starting on the origin, and we're going to drag out. Now we can just click to that corner where you can see that little blue box pop up. And then we know that it's exactly the same size as everything else. So now we've got a sketch there. At this point, we're just going to hit finish sketch. We're going to go back to extrude. And now we're going to select well, we have two profiles to select because it wants to know if we want to just select this inside. Fusion kind of tries to give you options of what it think it might want you to do, but we need to select the outside and the inside because we're going to make a lid. We want it to be enclosed. And from here, let's just drag it up three millimeters. So what we're going to do right now is not correct. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to just hit OK. And now what we did is we created a hollow cube. This is all one piece. It doesn't really have a lid anymore. It's just a cube. And the reason is, is that I'm gonna go back down to the bottom here, this little very bottom. That's the last thing we did, this extrude. You can right click on that and hit edit and it'll take you back into that last step we were in. Now on this right side, this operation down here, if you click that, it'll give you this drop down of, of things to do. What we want is the bottom one, which is new body. And we select new body and then we hit OK. And now you can see that there's a line around that. And that's because there's actually two separate pieces there in this model. So that's what you're that's what you're seeing. If you wanted to to kind of, you know, see things, you can use this little move button at the top. You could select that lid and then you could drag it up. That actually give you a view and you can kind of see what's going on. It's not always the best practice to do because Fusion remembers that and it, it tries to keep that into the, the number of things that you're doing. So I don't always recommend that, but at least it gives you an idea of what's going on. So we're gonna hit cancel and we'll just move it back to where it was. Um, can you make it orange? Sure. If you hit A on your keyboard, it'll pop up the appearance menu. There it is. And then it gives you all these different things that you could create. If we go to paint and say glossy paint, 
there is yellow. Let's use yellow and just, you can just drag it from there and you drag it onto something. Now we could hit edit and then mm, that's more orange. Done. Now we've made it orange. Sometimes I do like to apply those appearances because it shows you things that are different bodies. And it's actually something that I, I do often because it, it's help it visually it's helpful. So now here we've got a, a box with a lid that's not attached. There's nothing all that you know special about it or anything like that. But now if you look over in that tree that we talked about before, you can see it has body one and body two. If you select one of those, it will highlight what body that is. You can also take this chance and you can hide a body and that will allow you to, you know, see things and see around things a little bit differently. Some it's somewhat helpful. So let's do some manipulations. We need to make this box be more useful than what it is. So what we can do, I think, or what we should do, I'd say, is we need to put some screw holes in the top to make it actually, you know, function, give you the ability to screw the lid onto it. So let's do that. Let's do create a new sketch at the top and then select the top of that lid. Now in here, you can't really see what's going on that well. One thing that's nice to do is you can go in the display settings, visual style, and you can go shaded with hidden edges. And now you can see the outline of where the walls are of the lower part of the box or anything else that was would be in the model. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create a rectangle again. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do rectangle. And then on the right side, I'm gonna hit construction. And we're just gonna take that and we're gonna drag that up and just drag it into a general shape. I'm gonna hit D for dimension. I'm gonna select that line, the top line of that rectangle we drew and the top edge. And I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do three there and three on the sides, something like that. Actually, no, I'm gonna do four and four. So since we didn't have even or equal wall thicknesses everywhere, it, you can tell that things are a little bit different. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up to the top and grab the circle. I'm going to find that intersection point or the, the corner of the rectangle that we drew. And I'm going to draw a circle. Now it's dotted because I'm in construction mode. So I can select that circle and I can hit X on my keyboard, or I could have gone back over to that right side and clicked construction again. Either way will work. Now it's blue currently, which means it's not defined, meaning you could grab it and make it any size you wanted. We're going to, I'm just going to leave it huge right now. We're going to go back up to the top and hit the circle, or you can hit C on your keyboard for circle. And we're going to do that in all four corners. Not paying attention to the size at all. So we've got four circles there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and I'm going to select all four of those circles. And then I'm going to go up to the top in the constraints menu and I'm going to hit that equal button. And then it makes all four of them the same size. And moreover, if you were to grab one and change it, it will change all of them. Quite handy. It's a lot easier than defining every dimension. So you just do it one time. We hit D for dimension, selecting on that circle. And for this one, I'm gonna do 3.5 millimeter. And that's because this is going to be the lid of the receiver box. And I want the screws to be able to pass through it easily. And I would normally be using a three millimeter screw. So 3.5 millimeter gives you a little bit of leeway in 3D printing. So now we've got a sketch there. Let's hit finish sketch. And now we're going to hit the extrude button again, and we're going to select those four profiles with that. Here's where things can get a little bit tricky, but you can also make it easy on yourself with some tricks from Fusion. So right now we need to cut the lid. Now we know that the lid is only three millimeters, 
but say it was a funny size that you didn't know exactly. There's a couple of things you could do. If you could see the bottom edge, you could just select it and it will, well, it'll even kind of let you do it otherwise. You could just select it and it will take it to that three millimeter, which is handy. But say it's not an equal, you know, say that things are slanted or there's a number of things like that. One thing you can do is go over on the left side and just turn off the bot, like turn off body one, which is the bottom side. So if you turn that off, when you complete this cut, it will only cut the top lid because Fusion just, it only cuts the things that it can see, which is kind of a nice way to do it. Um, if you want to just, you know, save yourself some headache, just turn off all the other bodies and, except the one you want to cut and hit cut. That's just like a, a real basic way around it. The other way is, say you had them all on still, say you drug this thing all the way through even, just to whatever extent. On the right side, there's this objects to cut at the bottom of this dialog box. If you click the little arrow and drop it down, it will give you the option of which bodies you want to cut. So you could deselect body one, and then it would still only cut the lid. Shit okay. And now you've got four holes in the lid, no holes in the bottom. So there you go. Now, we have holes in the lid, but they don't screw into anything, which is obviously a problem. So we need to fix that. If we just make, I'm gonna turn off the lid by just hitting the little eye next to body two. If we were to just make holes in these corners, it wouldn't work right because you can see they don't really overlap properly with what we need to do or what we want to do. So, we can do this a couple of ways. Like always, in drafting, there's a lot of ways to get the same thing done. So we're gonna create a sketch. We're gonna select the top edge of this box. Now we can do, there's a number of tools. I'm gonna to keep it simple. It, rather than use, there's a, a tool that's very powerful called Project, and that's something that's very handy to use, but we're gonna, we're gonna, not use that yet this week. We'll just, unless we run into it somewhere else, but for now I'm gonna try and keep it simple. Gonna go back down, hit rectangle, center rectangle, start at the origin, drag up. I'm gonna hit construction. Oh, I'm gonna hit con hold control, grab all those edges and hit construction just because it's supposed to be dotted or because I'm using it just for, you know, this reference type geometry. I'm gonna hit D for dimension again. Now, I know that last time we went four millimeters all around. So we're just gonna do it the hard coded way, which isn't the best way because if you change things back in the tree earlier, it won't automatically update for you. But this is a simple project, so just keeping things basic is okay. So, hey, Addy Monster. Two, thanks for the donation. Added something extra to your TRX4 shot. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So we've got this here. This is the center of the holes that we had in the lid. What we're going to do is hit C for circle or click it at the top. We're going to grab that. Oh, I'm going to hit construction over on the side again to turn it off of construction. And we're going to make a couple of circles. We're going to make a circle within a circle. And we're going to do that at each corner. Again, the size does not matter at all. They don't have to be close to the same. They don't have to be accurate. They just have to be in the right spot. At least it helps. So we're gonna select the four outside circles first while holding control. And then we're gonna hit the equal sign. Then we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit escape just to clear anything. We're gonna do the same thing, holding control, and grabbing the four inner circles and then hitting equal. Now, these lower portion of the receiver box, we want to actually thread, you know, the screws to thread in. 
So we're going to hit D for dimension, and we're going to select that inner screw hole. We're going to drag that out, and I use 2.5 millimeter. That's what I use for 3D printing when I want a 3 millimeter screw to actually thread into it. That's the minor, uh, yeah, this, that is the minor OD of a 3 millimeter screw. So the outside of it is 3 millimeter. The inside of the threads is 2.5. So it's you, that's the reason that I go that way. Now, that's going to be our inner hole once we get there, but we still need to get this outer piece. And this is to give us some wall thickness around it. So when you try and put that screw down there, it doesn't just blow out the plastic. So we're gonna hit D for dimension, and we're gonna select the outside circle and the inside circle. And then it gives you a different dimension. And this is just the dimension from the outside of the inner circle to the largest circle. We're gonna select there and we're just gonna say, uh, we're gonna say three. Now, it's going to have made everything all around. You can see we've got this little bit of a overlap. It's not a big deal at all though. I'm gonna show you what we plan to do there. First, we're gonna hit finish sketch. We're gonna grab the extrude button again from the top. And then we're kinda of come down here and we're just going to select this single profile. Or the single portion of that of those two circles we created in each corner. And then that is going to get drugged down to the bottom surface. And we can actually just click the very bottom of this box. And well, it wants to turn it into a cut, but we can go over here on the right side, change that from a cut to a join so that it makes it just like a normal, normal bit of adding material. We're going to hit OK. You can all probably see the issue still though. We do not have a circle to actually thread into. But rather than redrawing everything you just did, in the, that tree on the left side of your screen here, you can drop down the sketches tree. And this is all of the sketches that you've done so far from the very first one that was the bottom of the box to the lit everything. So if we go to the very last one and we turn the eyeball on next to it, it turns it back on. And then we can go back up, hit extrude. And then this sketch has, we have the ability to select whatever we want. We really only need to select one portion of this, but you can go through and just select what you need from that, and we can drag that down 27 millimeters. And that would take it even with the bottom. I mean, there's no way you need that much thread in your receiver box, but why not? So we've got that. It shows a cut here on the left side. You can tell that because it's all red. We're gonna hit okay. Now, We've got something that is a box with holes in the top. We can go over on the left side and turn that sketch back off so we don't have to look at it. Now, one thing we could do is we can go back into display settings, visual style, and go back to shaded with visual, visual edges only. And that kind of takes things back to looking like a normal, normal 3D model. Anyway, thanks everyone for joining again. Uh, by the way, I, I know I'm kind of ignoring the chat trying to trying to stay with trying to stay on topic a little bit and and get get through this as and keep my thoughts as as clear as possible but on the left side here if we turn body two back on which is the lid now you can see that we've got the lid with a larger hole and the bottom part with a smaller hole that is a, a pass-through screw on the top and a threaded in portion on the bottom This is a very simple box that would screw together. It's not much of a receiver box because there's no way to get wires into it though. So probably something we should work on if we wanted to, to do that, right? So let's do a new sketch, top left. Create, oh. we already had that top selected so it, it automatically created on there. I'm gonna hit finish sketch to exit that. Um, 
and then down in the bottom on that tree, it actually created a new sketch on the top. I'm going to select it and then hit delete because that's not what I wanted. Create sketch, and I want to select the actual side here. Rotates around to the side. And then from here, we're going to do create a new rectangle, a regular rectangle there. And then I'm just going to select on that top edge, that top line. And we're going to just create, create a rectangle. Doesn't matter the size, really. Now, I can't also, other than just eyeballing it and trying to see that it's centered, it doesn't, it doesn't know where center is. So say you were really bad at eyeballing and you thought that was correct. Obviously, you're, you're not going to be that bad. I'm going to hit L for line to create a line. Then I'm going to hit X to make it a construction line. Down at the bottom, you see that circle that's, you know, it's got the cross in the middle, black and white. That's your origin point. We're going to select that. And then we're going to drag up until we find the little triangle along that bottom edge, which is the midpoint. So it's going to be right in the middle. You can see it pop up there. So now this line is connected to that midpoint. At the top, we can hit the horizontal vertical constraint button, and then we can go click on that line. And then it makes it perfectly vertical. And since it's attached to that midpoint, now it knows that everything has to be in the center. It's just, that's geometry. So we're going to hit D for dimension. We're going to select that bottom and sure, 20 millimeters. Now, one thing we don't know is if that is going to interfere with any of the stuff we did previously. If we wanted, we could go back into that visual style, turn hidden edges back on again and see that Actually, it won't interfere. We'll have some room still, but that's just an easy way to go. Now we're going to, we need to define the height because right now that bottom line's blue. So five millimeters. We're going to finish that sketch. We're going to click extrude so that we can make a cut by selecting that profile and then dragging inward. Doesn't really matter. You could drag all the way through and hit both sides, but we don't want to do that. We're just going to drag in there. Doesn't matter. Too far, right? Now, here is your, now you have a box that has a, a hole in the side. It's not, that would not be great for water or weather resistant. There's, you know, that's, that's not something that I would probably want to just leave as that is at this point, at least there's a number of things we could do. Um, you know, if you put all of, you know, your, whatever wires or electronics you wanted in there, you could kind of seal that up yourself, but that's not, you know, it's not the, the best looking or classiest thing you could do. But we could make things a little bit more fun, at least, especially with 3d printing, giving us all kinds of options. So let's turn off the lid again. And then let's do something. Let's add something that just makes this, you know, for, for water harder to at least splash in. Let's add a bit of, eh, how do we, let's, let's do it a different way. Add something a little bit different. Let's use the fillet tool. And then I'm going to put a fillet edge on this fillet just rounds things. So fill it and we're going to do two millimeter, uh, three millimeter. Why not? Since we had a little bit more wall thickness there. So that gave us that rounded edge. I'm changing my visual style back to visible edges only. So I'm going to do that because I'm going to add some component to the top of this lid to kind of help cover things as we go. Because why not? We're going to create a new sketch and we're going to create onto this lid. I'll, I'll, we're going to get into something that's a little bit more different here, a little, little bit more difficult, but it's going to make sense. I promise. So I'm going to create a rectangle. We're going to select the top. We're going to drag down. We're going to do the same on the other side. 
We don't know that these match. We don't know that they're the same size, anything, just drawing. Then we're going to connect the two with another rectangle. And we're going to make sure that it clicks onto that edge. Now, at the top here, there's this collinear constraint. And that just means that you can make sure that lines or edges are either in line with each other or on top of each other. It just means that they're just they're parallel and on top. You know, there's parallel, just which you probably know what parallel means running, you know, an exact same angle. But collinear means that they're on top of each other. We're going to use that and we're going to select this edge of the hole that we made. And we're going to select the edge, inside edge of that rectangle. And we're going to do the same on this other side. Okay. Now, the top edge or the bottom, let's use the bottom since you can see it better. We're going to select that one. We're going to hold control and we're going to select this other side. And then we're going to hit equal at the top. So it made them the same width. Now another th thing, we can use that collinear again, grab it, and we select this bottom edge and this one, and now it brought them to the same level. So now if you adjust it, it adjusts them both. Let's hit D for dimension and define the width of this to be um, four millimeter. And let's say that this thing is going to extend down um, let's see, 16 millimeter, just because, like I said, this is going to be, this is more about what we're doing rather than the actual end product. So we're going to hit finish sketch. This is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. So I'll, I'll try and explain it as best I can. We're going to hit extrude and we're going to select the areas that we need. And we're going to drag that out. Now here's where if I hit, let's say we go, we're going to go five millimeters. If I hit okay right now, being that it says join on the right side, it is going to make everything in this one body again, because it's going to try and join this piece that we're just drawing to both the top and the bottom. I'm going to hit okay. And everything's going to turn orange. That is not what we want. So instead, we're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to hit edit, edit feature. Now on the right side, we're going to hit new body. And then we're going to hit OK. Now, technically, we have three pieces in here, but that piece that we just drew, we want it to be part of the lid. So we're going to hit, we can hit combine up here at the top. And then we can select the lid and that new piece and hit OK. So now that whole thing is just one part. And now the next thing we need to do is we're going to put a face on that. We're going to create sketch. We're going to click that face. We're going to select a rectangle and we're just going to hit the top left corner and the bottom right. Finish sketch, extrude, and click both of those profiles and give it three millimeters. Now, right here again, if we hit join, we'll see, I think it will, it should leave things separate because it's only touching one body. It did. Okay. We're okay there. So, the whole reason of what we just did there is to kind of create this, this trap so that water can't, you know, just get up. If you want to see, uh, there's actually some cool features in fusion 360 in the top right here, there's this inspect. If you hit the drop down and go to section analysis, kind of a cool tool you can select a face here like this and then just drag through. And you can kind of cut through the model and see what things look like in there. But you can see the whole point is, is now that we have this, this path for, you know, wires to, to go in, but water, maybe not to be able to splash up as easily. You could 3d print this, you could put some, you know, petroleum jelly in there, anything like that, maybe help, 
make this thing fairly watertight without having to have anything, having a special seal or anything like that. Liquid electrical tape. If you use like a, you know, dielectric grease or something like that, something that is, uh, is water resistant but not going to glue stuff together, it would be helpful. We're gonna hit cancel on that section analysis to get us back. But now, one thing that we did here though, is we created this model that basically has almost no forgiveness. We've got this edge here of the bottom box and it has to go right up against this other face. You know, everything has to line up perfectly. It's, it's one of those things where you don't really ever want to pretend that 3D printing is exactly that accurate. I would normally like to give myself like a half of a millimeter of clearance. So if I was going to do that in this way, there's a, you know, we could take and do a new sketch on the side here and then do something like a cut like this and define this as a half a millimeter. I'm just doing this super quickly. I know. So, hitting extrude, selecting that profile, and then dragging through. Now, yes, that would technically make this less watertight, but it would make things go together more accurately or easily, more realistically. So that is one way you could do it, is by doing a sketch like that. I'm going to undo that, though. The other way you could do it is you could turn off the first body, which is the bottom. Then you could go up and without creating a sketch or anything, you could hit the extrude button and you could select that face and you could just do, you could drag it in to any dimension. You could just type in negative 0.5. And then you did the exact same thing in just a different way. You just have to do it on both sides. So you've created the exact same thing, two different ways. So. Yeah, and you could use Shugu or anything like that, but it's, you know, adhesive. I like using, you know, like uh, light bulb grease or things like that. Things that are waterproof, but not, not an adhesive. So it's easy to just pull apart. Uh, could you just sand and sand, sand or file till it fit correctly? Absolutely. But especially when you're into like more complex models than what I'm this very simple kindergartner looking box that I'm drawing, then it's just, that's where I like to try and give myself that half of a millimeter of clearance. I, I find that to be a, a, just a better practice. So, you know, in this little spot, you probably could have just sanded that or just kind of pushed it in there until it wasn't a problem or the fact that it's a, an area where you want it sealed. Maybe you wouldn't have wanted to do it at all. You could have just left it. I'm going to just hit undo until that's all gone. And you could just kind of, you know, force it into place because it's, you know, you're trying to make this thing that's somewhat of a seal. So, you know, different things you could do there. Let's make this box look somewhat more reasonable. Let's use that fillet tool again. So up at the top, there's the fillet. I like, I put fillets on everything. Fillets are, fillets make things look good. So I'm gonna go select just all of these outside corners first. We're gonna put like a, just three, three millimeter radius. Looks better already. Now we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna grab these outsides here, probably do it two. I mean, we could even probably hit three on those and still look pretty good. These corners, let's see if how it wants to, yeah, it'll do. These corners, three millimeter. We're looking better. Hey, Mark Cargill, thanks for the donation. Wouldn't it have been better to add a channel in the box face or a small notch in the lid drop down? Would it be add a channel in the box face. Um, channel in the box. I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely ways, a bunch of ways you could go about this. 
this was kind of more about the the things that we were running across in the modeling. Um, I mean, I don't know that like depends on how if I was what I was really trying to do for a for a uh, a uh, receiver box if this is the way I'd go or not. But I think this would also probably be one that gave you a, a fairly comfortable amount of you know wiring area, something that would actually three D print pretty easily as well. So I don't know. Um, to keep it more water type, adding it. Yeah, I mean, this was just, this was to just try and give it that, you know, trap effect so that water couldn't, didn't want to just come in with a, with a, you know, a bot or a groove cut in the side. That was all that we were, we were going after. So let's hide the lid. On the inside, we could do, you know, if we wanted to clean things up add like a little radius there to make it just not so sharp. And then if I was doing this, I would go in and just throw some radii all over the place to make less hard corners. I also think that having less sharp corners makes your printer run a little bit smoother. Let's see, what is uh, 1.5 millimeter? Yeah, just looks nicer. So some pretty basic stuff there. If we hide the bottom, probably clean up. I would add some radii in there. Since that's basically just where wires would be, we don't need it to be sharp. Did you put holes on the bottom just in case water gets in so that it falls out? Well, you could, but water would have also come into the bottom then because it doesn't like to stay out. If it was sealed at the top, then, you know, if it was the perfect solution, like when you take a piece of glass and push it underwater, it wouldn't come in. But, you know, it's hard to say. If I was going to, you know, I would maybe add a couple of holes in the bottom of this to mount it. But at the same time, if you just went with double-sided tape, you'd probably have a better a better solution for some some proper uh, proper water protection. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's do one other thing. Let's say you had this box, but you wanted to make it kind of self-center a little bit better. You wanted to kind of, and this is where you know where adding that bit of tolerance might be a good idea. So let's do, we're just going to do a kind of a, a funny one. I want to make it self-center. We're going to do rectangle, center rectangle. I'm going to select that. We're going to go something like that. Oh, and then we're just going to go like that. So we're going to go two millimeters off that wall like that. And we're going to hit a dimension here of 28, 28 millimeters wide. Now I'm going to hit finish sketch and we're just going to select these three areas because this side lines up with the opening we already put in. And we're just going to drag these down say two millimeters. So we just put a, a few little cuts in there. Now, what we would want to do is we, I would want to add in those same parts for the, uh, on the top so that they kind of fit in there, but with a little bit of, of uh, tolerance, like I was saying before. So one thing that we're gonna do is we need to define where it's going to be. The easiest way to do that is, even though we're going to be working on the top, I'm going to hide the top first. We're going to turn that off. I'm going to hit Create Sketch. I'm going to select the top of this box, since the top of the lid and the top of the box meet at the same point. But now we have this here. I talked about this tool just slightly before, but we're going to use the Project tool. And 
the reason that it's such a handy function is because we've got all of this, you know, all of these areas where it'd be nice to have the geometry. And you can just hit the P key on your keyboard, project, and then just select that whole face and then hit enter. And then it gives you all of the line work that you, you needed. At this point, say you wanted to turn the bottom off and turn the top on. I don't know why you wouldn't necessarily need to do that, but in case you wanted to, now you can see where all of those areas were touching this lid. Maybe that would help you in your, in your thought process. Maybe it's just the way that you, you think compared to, you know, other people. So if we go back up and hit rectangle and we just start drawing our random rectangles in places, not paying attention to size or gap distance, anything like that. If I was going to do this, we'd have this done and we could go grab that collinear uh, constraint again, do that and then make like these lines match up and these lines at the end match up. And since that's there, we could also grab the equal constraint. Say we grab the, the depth or thickness of each of these and then hit equal. So it makes them all the same, just for consistency. So here's where the tolerance part comes in. I'm gonna hit D for dimension. I'm gonna select this bottom line and then this one here. We're gonna hit 0.5, half of a millimeter. I'm gonna do the same on all three sides that would come into close contact with so there we have that down here i'm only going to need to do one of the sides because the other two are in line with this bottom one down here we're going to do all three again hit escape first so that I could drag it without starting a dimension. Then I'm gonna hit D for dimension again. Now, let's see. It doesn't know the actual thickness there. You can see as we drag it, it adjusts all of them. I don't like to go any thinner than two millimeter since most 3D printers have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, but once you go any wider than that, it doesn't really matter because infill kind of makes it however. So let's go with, uh, we're gonna hit D for dimension, grab one of those sides. We're just gonna call it three millimeters. We're gonna hit finish sketch. And then we took the other one down, I believe two millimeters. So on this one, we need to go less than that. Otherwise we're gonna crash into each other. So we can go uh, negative 1.5. And then we have these little bosses that will tie into the bottom. Again, it's kind of hard to, to see. Um, we can't, does this have a, uh, doesn't have the uh, transparent. I believe you can turn things transparent in here. I just don't remember offhand. I rarely use it. So I used the section analysis tool up and in inspect again. I'm just going to select that one face, hit OK. Oops, not OK. That's not what I needed. So if you see right there, that's that lip where we were uh, creating that kind of keys in. That's on the side. You'll see the one over here on the other side. This was not really necessary. It would just kind of make thing make things uh, slightly align better with themselves when you're trying to put this all together. It wouldn't, like I said, this is more about what we're doing rather than trying to actually come up with a, a 3D model that we would be, you know, using at the end of this. More just about 
teaching what we're trying to do. I think this is a stash box. <laughs> Yes, Schrodinger's box. So you can see like this is, we're running into a lot of these things. It's, there's some topics in here that aren't 100% just day one basics, but you can, once you run across these things, like just, you know, draw up this box or a, a version of it with your own dimensions and you'll see how how these things that we're running across would, would be helpful countersink the lid screws. Yeah, if you wanted to use flathead screws uh, in the modify tab up above, like we were using fillet before, but fillet rounds the edges. For a flathead, you want it to be chamfered. So you'd hit that drop down and you would hit chamfer rather than fillet. And then you would select all four of these and a three millimeter flathead countersunk screw is 1.7 millimeters, so. You hit 1.7 on there and hit OK. Then you have yourself four screw holes that will now, now accept a flathead three millimeter screw. If you want that nice, smooth, flat lid. So, again, this is very simple, like as far as this goes, but this is, uh, this goes along the lines of what, of what we're doing. Now, if you're 3D printing this, now technically you need to get this out of this file and then you need to 3D print it. Those bodies that we've been talking about this whole time, each of those is what you need to export as a 3D printing an STL file. So if like this bottom, you select over here on the, you just click on that body on the left side, right click, and then go save as STL. This little window will pop up here on the right and you can hit okay. And then just call this whatever, STL RX box bottom, save. And then you do the same thing for the lid. Select it, right click, save as STL, hit okay. And STL RX box lid, hit save. Then you could take that and import those files into your 3D printing, um, into your 3D print file or into your 3D print program, I could say. So like, we'll just open Cura just because I still need to activate Windows. I know I need to activate Windows on this computer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you change the angle of the chamfer? Uh, yes, you can. I can get back into that. Oh, actually, I can just do it. Um, so in that bottom, since the chamfer was the last thing we did, go in the bottom there and hit right click and then hit edit. Now, right now it's equal distant, which means it goes 1.7 millimeters out and 1.7 millimeters down. So if you went to either two distance or distance and angle, so say two distance, you would have 1.7 this way, and then you could change the other one to 1.25. So now it's, it's more shallow than it is, you know, you can see how that changed. It, it just changes that. So I'm not updating Cura. So here, if here is your, your Cura in case, you know, whatever one you're, you're using, in here, you would hit open, select the two files that you plan to print, if you plan to print them at the same time. And then at this point, I would take this lid and I would rotate it 180 degrees. Come on. <laughs> like that, and then, and that's pretty much all I would do other than, uh, you know, just keeping them close together. But I would print them like that. 
You won't need, you wouldn't need any support material. There'd be nothing fancy about this. You would just hit slice and then export that to your printer. So. Yeah, countersunk screws are not 45 degrees or 60. I know, but with for 3D printing and countersunk screws and 3D printing material, 45 degrees works just fine. So there's usually no reason to change it. Do a 1.7 millimeter, 45 degree chamfer, and it just goes in flush every time. Like it's it's such a slight difference with that that it's not like it's not worth me ever going in and keying in 1.7 at 60 degrees and then making sure that I've got 60 degrees the right way, not the complementing angle. It's just like 45 degrees, 1.7, you're good, you're done. So that would be your 3D print file exported and ready to print. Everything looks pretty decent. You can see here we've got, uh, what do we have? Three shell, oops, three shells, a little bit of infill. So our three millimeter width was just fine. It's good to go. I'm not going to 3D print that, but I was just showing. <laughs> I'm just saying it was a, I'm a machinist. It's a habit. Yeah, I know what you mean. If I was doing it in, in metal, I would, I would definitely care more. Uh, it's a nice thing with 3D printing throw a half millimeter of tolerance there. You make wacky, you can make, you know, sharp internal corners. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. 3D printing makes you lazy in those ways. But at the same time, like that's the thing, you know, if I'm designing for, for machining or 3D printing, there's a lot that changes. That's, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. Like when they're like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm great at design. I make all my own 3D printed stuff. Like, well, it doesn't necessarily transfer to you know, machining for actual or for doesn't necessarily transfer to design for actual products and actual manufacturing. <laughs> HD logo on the lid. I would, I just, this isn't like a model I would, I would be proud of. This is just something I just threw out there for the, the purpose of, of teaching. But if no one, if you've never put text on something, I'll show you. This isn't one that I think I'll upload just because this is really basic. I think you guys could create this pretty easy. We create, we hit sketch, threw it on the top or selected the top. Then from the create drop down, you can go down and hit text. Just drop it in at a point, fill in what your text would be. Select your font. I like impact. You can grab this little handle here and rotate. 180 degrees, and you can change the height to whatever you want, say 20. Big. And the sketch, uh, you know, making, you know, fitting it or like placing it in very exact ways, not that great, but whatever. You can kind of just judge based on the text itself. Hit finish. Now for this, since like I just showed in the 3D print, I, I would want this top to be flat. So I would make this as a cut. I'd go in a millimeter um, rather than go up. Because if you went up and you tried to print it upside down, you'd have a little bit of the text flat and then you'd have to have all kinds of support material. But, you know, the little things. Josh, did you just tell us you taught us to make trash? Yes. If you drew this, well, maybe it would be useful. Hopefully you could change the dimensions to make it actually useful for you. But I think the, uh, the journey is much more important than the destination in this uh, instance itself. If, for you, if you're newer to 3D modeling, you know, those of you who are know your way around fusion very well. This was probably not the most informative stream for you. This is just the, uh, this is, this is more, you know, for, for those that are wanting to dip their toe in, it doesn't have to be that hard. If you had this video going and pausing along the way, I think you could, you could do it. 
uh, thinking of getting my first 3D printer for RC related prints. I'm trying to start with a sub $500 printer. Suggestions? Absolutely. Just pick yourself up an Ender 3 Pro or you know one of those. I think they're like less than 250 or 300 bucks. Get that printer and get yourself a couple rolls of PLA. PLA is just fine for just about everything. Just don't leave it in your car. But beyond that, it's great. Just roll with it. You'll make you'll be in, in great shape. Pick that up. No reason to spend a bunch more. Personally, I think I'm going to buy myself a uh, a uh, Prusa. It's like 800 bucks. But I've got so many other printers and I just kind of want to have that one. That's the top one that I want. I just, I think that's the, the route that I'm going to go. Um, so yeah, the, uh, and the other thing is, is like, there's a million 3d printers and a million ch of choices that are a lot of them built around the same stuff. The reason that the enders are really nice though, is because there's a huge community. So like there's a ton of these other ones that are, that are great machines, but if you're new and you're like, like, and I just want to find a video that I'm having this problem. Like I'm going to look up a video. There's going to be 50 videos or a thousand people, 2000, 5,000 people in a Facebook group that are going to be like, I have that printer. I can help you. So a community is very important and very, very nice to have. So I've had a lot of printers that don't have anybody else that have had them and you have to find your way around it. So there's, you know, the reason that I want the Prusa is because there's a number of things about it that are very nice. Um, and, but for one, if you're just getting a printer for the first time, like maybe you don't spend a ton of money because maybe you're not going to use it. I think that half of the value of 3d printing comes if you decide to teach yourself some CAD, if you teach yourself some CAD, you can make that 3D printer be one of the most powerful tools you have. It will build things for you as you go do something else. If you don't have that, then you're relying on finding something that already exists. And sometimes that can be powerful to people. But if you can draw, teach yourself, spend some time in it, it's invaluable. So, uh, how would you make a skid to bolt a slash front end to a wraith? That's a very involved project. Um, for one, I would not 3d print that because that there's a lot of stress that I don't, I don't like 3d printed skid plates that much. I mean, people do it all the time. I just don't like them, but that is a very involved project. You would, that would be your in to a lot of work. You're going to need to do a lot of drivetrain checks and angles. There's a lot to that. Um, are you going to put out the trailer? I am going to, I just need to get back to work on it. Obviously the, the project list, you know, rolling here and there, and I just haven't got back to it. I feel like the, uh, the more basic lessons that we've been doing on this have also been helpful. So I wanted to do at least one more of those in a row. So anyway, sorry. Um, let's see what else we got here. This is, you know, I think kind of, kind of gets where we, I, this is very simple. I get it. And not, not a super exciting project to look at, but at least it's, it's something, you know, it, uh, give you an idea, put a little half millimeter chamfer around the bottom. If you do something like that, a lot of times it will help keep that bottom edge of your print looking a little bit better. You won't get that smashed first layer uh, that kind of gives you that. It's not really the elephant foot, but it kind of is. Throw a half millimeter chamfer on there. It keeps everything looking a little bit nicer. You know, why not? So let's see. A much needed piece. Yeah, this it's not a not a great looking one, but you know, if you guys have a printer, you'll be able to get it. Nylon X is a great carbon fiber infused filament, but nylon is harder to work with than PLA. Yeah. I've seen the nylon X stuff. Uh, 
I think I've used it once or twice on my original TiVo that I have. It's not a, it's not bad at all. It's uh, nice and strong. For the most part, I didn't like really feel like I needed to, you know, to keep going that route. I just, I went back and went to just, I print PLA for most everything. I've got PETG that I use on occasion when I want a little bit more flex, but you know, that's about it. Um, have you used, and oh, sorry, that's the only one I saw that there. Bubbly sucks. We LaCroix boys around here. No. Bubbly actually has some flavor. LaCroix, like, what was it? What was the one I saw today? Like, rode, a, rode in a container next to strawberries or hint of a hint of lime. <laughs> uh, are the fires staying away? Hope you guys are staying safe. Fires are closer than we'd, we'd like. Like, it's not, that's not great, but, you know, stay alert. Looks fine on my, the hinges on my refrigerator are nylon X. Gee, what kind of, ref, how big of a refrigerator, Alex? Um, Josh, not designing what the world wants, designing what the world needs. <laughs> um, I was just curious about durability. I was using ABS a lot. Oh, a ABS is, is no joke to print with. That's definitely more, uh, seems like ABS is one of the most finicky materials to try and print, but a lot of people are good. Excuse me, sir. Lemon Limoncello is the greatest. Oof. Oof. I, I don't mind the Pomplemousse LaCroix, but still. AKA grapefruit. <laughs> also, strawberry with a low battery. <laughs> Bubbly is the best of the fizzy waters, but the best terrible drink is still a terrible drink. <laughs> Once I got PETG dialed in, it's about all I think I print with. I like PETG for a lot of instances, but I usually just go back to PLA for most easy printing. The RC Speedy Moon Buggy sure does look tempting to buy and build. <laughs> build must need. I don't, I just finished mine. It's up there. I'm not like super happy with it. It's okay, but eh, I don't know. It needs a lot still. It's going to take a lot of work before, before I really get, you know, happy with it. It's going to take some, some cutting out of some of the stuff that's on that chassis. Uh, better start packing the router 3D printers in our season and rental trailer. For, yeah. It, I mean, honestly, no, like if they were like that, I'd, Grab Nicole and the cats and GTFO. It, all that stuff can be replaced with better stuff, right? Liking the man mango bubbly is one of the best. Yeah, thanks, J.R. Layson. Better than flying cars. Jo uh, Josh, did you get an active gladiator? I have not got a gladiator yet. It's on my list, but I'm not sure. Um, PTG is a great, especially for the more SBG style builds. It sands well and it makes it better. Yeah, the, it is a little bit gummy, I find, for printing, but it still works pretty well. Moon buggy, laser nut? That what y'all? Uh, no, we're talking about. Uh, so this is from a company called RC Speedy. And it's a, this is a stainless steel welded cage. Um, but what I've found is that the, the ride height on it, like it doesn't sit well. It sits well, way too high. The shock, ain't, like, and also the shocks bind up. These are just, these are small 90 millimeter shocks and they automatically bind up on the front shock mounts. They needed to be slightly rotated, but they just like right there, they're already bound up and I've got almost all of the shock travel left with stock links on it still. The rear is fine. Rear goes. So I do have a three gear transmission in here uh, on a three gear specific skid plate and the drive shaft hits, but that probably wouldn't be the case if it was a standard skid. So, um, so I don't, I don't fault them for that, but 
there's a lot of things that need work on this. So I don't know, not super happy. I'm going to go to 80 mil shocks to try and lower it a little bit. And I'm going to have to figure out what to do with these front shock mounts to ha on how to make this thing usable. Because right now, if I don't do something, I would have to go to some sort of shock that I could use a like a an actual rod end cap on or something like that. It's just, it sucks. So, yeah. That's my, my take on that one. Uh, you say the Ripper will be easily be replaced? No, not easily, but you know, I would, I could live. I would live still. Can you make this trash, but better? Gonna buy some VPD 44 and build, uh, what color should I choose? Coin flip. I always like clear axles. They're just my preference. Does that chassis use an SCX-10 two skid? No, this chassis that I was just showing you there is all capra. It's made for a capra skid plate, capra axles, everything. Um, can you relocate the front shocks further out on the axle? The problem is the actual front to rear angle where they bind. So it's that's the annoying part. Purple soda. No, this is water. This is bubbly. Blackberry bubbly flavored water. So, uh, what about making a droop setup on it once it's a full crawler? I don't, I don't run droop. I hate droop. Uh, it's not something I run on any rig really. Um, so while it, it's nice to be able to give it that look of just sitting low, I do not like droop. Who thinks Josh way overpaid Friday night? It'll be fine. Leave the Ripper in the Jeep so it's always ready for bug out. I'd be afraid that my Jeep, my Jeep's already been broken into before. Um, let's see. So yeah. What did you pay? How much was it? Uh, what? What did we pay for what? So that chassis is was a different project than what we were talking about on Friday night. That chass, this chassis was like 350 bucks. So not a bad price for a nice chassis, um, but there's some definite issues which are unfortunate. But on Friday night, the other chassis I got was about a thousand bucks. <laughs> Josh dislikes droop and leaf springs because he is boring and doesn't like fun. <laughs> I don't like droop because I will explain this. While droop gives you that nice low look, you know, it keeps everything like real low and you know, your center of gravity is low. But if you're trying to crawl and you need a little bit of momentum, when that back comes up and when it hits, there is no suspension left to move down. So it just hits and it, there's, it's all rigid, so it wants to buck the rear. It's not stable. You can't let your suspension actually do something to go. Um, it just rigid hit, unsettles the car. In general, I think that's a, a poor way to go. If you're going really slow always, then okay. But you can't just slow crawl things all the time and make up the same situation that you can with a little bit of momentum. So... I don't care how well your stuff's set up, momentum will crawl better than just slow crawling in a lot of situations. So that was our, I mean, that's about all we had for the actual 3D printing or the fusion part of it. I didn't know if there's anything else we really wanted to cover on that. I think that's, I was trying to spin around on my actual OBS settings rather than on my 3D model, but a fun, another, a fun lesson in ways, not the, not the uh, world's most interesting model, but hopefully you guys can, can handle that. Uh, sorry when I missed anything else. Uh, 
When are Vanquish when are Vanquish crawler kits coming to Australia? Seem the only way to get one is from the states. Uh, no, we've got dealers in Australia that that pick them up every once in a while. Um, it just depends on the dealers. Sometimes they carry them, sometimes they don't. But we have several dealers in Australia. Um, I don't know what you're talking about with Paw Patrol, Alex, but I'm sure my nephew would be on board. The HD stands for hastily done on this one. <laughs> Again, journey, not the destination. <laughs> I think he mounted a Paw Patrol toy on an S. Oh my God. What trailer is in the box? Uh, that is the deep freeze to Maya trailer. Looking forward to building that. So many plans for that thing. So many plans. So excited. Can you lay a real picture in the background to work off of Infusion? Yeah, we can do that. I'll show you that on just, uh, I'm going to just start a new document. I'll just kind of show you what. Uh, use the plus button up at the top, just create a new document. Then in here, in the top, you can go to construct. Oh, wait, sorry, not construct. Is it insert? insert and then you want canvas so select canvas we're gonna we find the picture let's see what i have on my i'm gonna scroll this up in case there's anything on this computer that i'm not allowed to show no everything on here is fine so um cj commando this was something that i was actually looking at before CJ7 grill, for example, you wanted to do that. It'll ask you where you want to put it. We'll put it on the front face like that. And then it drops it in. So that gives you the actual, the unmentionables. Not that, I mean, like if I have photos of products that aren't supposed to be seen yet or things like that, that's what I was discussing. Not my work computer folder or whatever you know whatever you used to store things as before the internet was so good so you would have this canvas but you didn't really drop it into a proper scale you just dropped it in so if you click over here and right click on the image and hit calibrate and say that you knew that you needed this thing to be like 50 millimeters or 100 millimeters say from outside to outside you would click those two points and type in 100. Then it would scale it to the proper size. And then you could draw off of this, you know, and actually make, you know, try and make a, a CJ7 grill. The reason I had this on here was because I did exactly that. Um, what did I call it? Well, there's CJ grill, but I could have swore I had it. Was it all in that one file? I thought I had it saved as like a class one or something. Let's see. No, nope, it's all in there. So you can see my, my grill there. And that was because if I turn on that file, you can see actually that grill is being referenced in there. If I turn off everything else. Even if I turn off that body, there's the grill. And there's my model. All right. I have plans for this to do the, uh, to mold and, and create, to make a kind of a commando body. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. I'm hoping to do this for like a class one for scale nationals. Have you ever designed gears? The M the MSC import feature is cool on Fusion, and that's how I import gears. Um, no, I've never done gears on here. It's I guess I've just it's never been something that I've 
I don't usually use like 3D printing for gear stuff just because it's such high stress. So normally I would do that like in SolidWorks at, at you know, rather than Fusion. I only use Fusion for stuff at home really, not for like, like real work projects or anything like that. I'm still SolidWorks all the way. So where where did we leave off? Um, how did I get here? <laughs> Good question. Uh, Make it RC does a great video where he models based on reference images inside of Fusion, but he doesn't really do tutorials type stuff. Yeah, I mean that's that's a whole part of it, but I. A lot of times, especially with like cage work, I will work off of other like profile pictures and things like that and go from there. But that'll at least get you the. How much does Fusion differ from SolidWorks? It differs quite a lot in, you know, the way that it does individual tasks, but the theory or the, you know, kind of methodology is basically the same in most CAD modeling packages. It's not, it doesn't wi vary that widely that it's like a huge deal. Um, uh, the basics are transferable between most CAD packages. Exactly. Uh, I'm using Josh is demonstrating, but in free CAD, which people won't like, but I don't feel up to farting around with wine infusion. <laughs> Will that trailer haul your bro dozer? Oh, you're killing me. No, the trailer's for the fat fox. Oh my God. My mom has an 85 CJ7. Love to build her one. Uh, would that model be available? I don't think that this model's going to be available. I don't, I don't think at least. This one I've got some lofty plans for. We'll see. There's a lot. This one is not going to be made for 3D printing for the most part. It's going to be made for me to try and make in some some other ways on the, the CNC machine and some carbon fiber and a lot of just, just, you know, cross my fingers and hope things go well. Uh... Thanks for helping me dive into the world of Fusion 360. Hey, no problem. It's fun stuff and it's worth learning. It's very powerful. I tried to design portal boxes for a 118th crawler. That's why I was using gears to figure out the bearing pocket look at, aha, 118th portals. Nice. Later, Phoenix. Thanks everybody for joining. I think we're gonna cut this one off. Hour and a half in. Uh, we got through, you know, the basics of everything. Um, can't find, damn, can't find a CJ7 conversion for the Tamiya Y. I thought that there was one at one point, but I think maybe it's just been a number of people doing it custom. This one would be larger than, than the, the Tamiya. So we'll see. This project is, is one that I've got, got in the back of my mind and we'll see if it, if it ever comes, comes through. Look out for tracking number tomorrow. Thanks, Addy Monster. Appreciate it. Thanks, Professor. <laughs> Harley, appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's all we have for this week, guys. Appreciate it again. Thanks for hanging out. Another fun Sunday stream. Hope you all are doing well wherever you are. Fire areas, hurricane areas, all of the above. Stay safe. Have fun. See you guys Tuesday for the Scan News Update. Later. <laughs>